Hey, it's Dino from Apogee, and today I want to talk to you about JSON WebKey and JWKS, and especially how you can use JWKS inside Apogee. So what's JSON WebKey or JWK? It's really just a JSON notation for a cryptographic key. It's a way to represent crypto keys in JSON. There is an IETF standard, which I'm showing on the screen, IETF RFC 7517. Um, and you may have seen these. So here's an example from the standard that shows a couple of different public keys in JWK format. Together, these form a JWKS. This is a key that is an elliptic curve key. Here is an RSA public key. And um, it's just a way to represent keys. While it is a standard, it is also being adopted by vendors. So, for example, Google offers Google Sign In for various third parties, and uh, that's an open ID Connect provider. When you sign in with Google Sign In, um, as with other uh, providers of Sign In, like um, Azure tenants, uh, you get a JWT. It's usually signed. It's usually signed with an asymmetric algorithm. And for almost all of the vendors that I know, there is a public URL at which that OpenID Connect provider uh, shows you where uh, shows you the public keys. Public keys are not secret, um, so they freely publish them at what's known as a well-known endpoint, and then they tell the third parties, application developers. Um, listen, if you want to verify a signature on a JWT that's issued by Google, go to this place, you get our public keys, and you can use one of those public keys to verify the signature. Usually, which public key you, uh, you need to use to verify a signature is determined by matching on the key ID, or KID, in the JWK. So it's a, it's a standard, it's being adopted. Um, from time to time, I get a question. People say, I know Apogee can verify JWT. I know Apogee can generate JWT, but can Apogee publish a JWKS endpoint so that third parties can verify the JWT that Apogee generates? And the answer to that is yes, Apogee can do that. You need to do some work to make that happen, but it's absolutely possible. Apogee does not include built-in management tools for JWKS content, but it's really easy to produce a key in this form or to take a public key and serialize it into that form and then load that serialized form into the key value map or KVM inside Apogee. Because public keys tend to, key pairs in general, tend to change slowly. You don't rotate these things very often. Um, the JWKS content is generally static. It doesn't change. Um, if I go back to the Google page tomorrow, it's going to be the same keys. Uh, it's generally static. So um, we don't need Apogee to generate new JWKS every time a request comes in. Really, we just need to, Apogee to deliver the static, uh, externally managed JWKS content when requested. And so I produced a um, GitHub repo with an example API proxy and some tools that show you how you might, how you might do that. For the rest of this um, screencast, I'll just sort of walk you through what that looks like. So before we get into uh, actually using it, let's have a look at the, the API proxy first. Um, there is a, a single proxy endpoint. It is a loopback. It doesn't connect to any targets. Uh, it's got two flows. One is uh, a flow for generating a token. So it's a request that just please generate a token for me. Uh, and it generates a JWT. The second flow is uh, just a get for the JWKS endpoint. And all it does is retrieve the JWKS material from the key value map and then assemble a response and send that back. So that's what the proxy looks like. Um, the other interesting part of this repo is the tools. And there are no JS tools that I wrote. Um, the one interesting thing that I'll walk you through is uh, maybe provisioning a key pair. So where do we get these RSA key pairs that Apogee might use to sign uh, JWT? Well, um, in the Node.js tool, I'm using a module called Node Jose, which is something that's written by Cisco. And really, Jose, remember, is the JSON object signing and encryption 
um, suite of standards that includes JWT, JWS, JWE, JWA, JWK, all those JSON things related, kind of uh, all related in that family of standards. Um, this is just a module that helps Node.js script writers um, deal with those kinds of things. Um, generate a JWT from Node.js, read a key from Node.js, and so on. So I've built some tools that rely on that module um, in order to generate keys. And that's what this thing does. It just generates a key, uh, generates a new key pair, and then loads those things into the uh, KVM using another Node.js module, uh, the Apogee Edge uh, JS module. So that's uh, just one of the interesting tools. Um, but this key provisioning tool, this is something that you'd run on your developer workstation, and it would interact with the, um, with the Apogee organization in the cloud, load things into the KVM, and then the proxy would just read the KVM and deliver that information to the, um, to the clients, the API clients that are accessing it. OK, so um, that's kind of a quick tour of what's in the repo. Let's just start using it. So let me clone, or let me um, grab the, the URL for cloning the repo, and um, we'll get started. So git clone, uh, you, you all can follow along with this yourselves. You can do the same thing. Then I'll cd into this, uh, cd into the tools directory, and I'm just following along these steps here. Um, so cd into the tools directory. Next thing I have to do is uh, npm install. So I do need to um, install all the prerequisites. That's the Node.js library, uh, the Node Jose library, and so on, uh, the Apigee Edge JS library. Next thing I want to do is provision uh, an Apigee organization with all the requisite parts for this demonstration. Um, that would be a new key pair going into the key KVM. The proxy gets imported and deployed. And then there's a product, a developer, and an app. All of those things are things that I could do using the pointy clicky user interface, but what I want to do is do it more quickly. So I've got a tool that does that in automated fashion for me. And this one, I'll run this version because I have my credentials in the .NET RC file. So I'll need to set my organization and my environment. Your settings will be different. Then I'm going to run that provisioning script and you can see uh, what it's doing. It, it creates this key pair, loads it into the KVM, imports a, um, an API proxy, um, deploys it, creates an API product, a developer, an app, and then uh, presents to me the, uh, the output of that information, uh, uh, the output of that procedure. So what do we see? We see it's telling me, well, this is a JWKS endpoint. Um, and then there's the client ID and secret. And I'm just going to set uh, shell variables for those things. And it's also hinting, it hasn't run this command, but it's told me, the script has told me, look, you can try this out just by running this command. So let me copy that and paste it. Um, and sure enough, I'm invoking the API proxy that I've provisioned. Before we get too much further, let's, let's actually go into the organization, uh, into the user interface. Uh, one thing I really like about the user interface, I don't like all the pointy clicky things to provision, uh, but I do like the trace. Um, so here's the API proxy. This is the same thing that you saw in the code repo. Um, there's the generate JWT policy. Here's the KVM policy that gets the JWKS. Um, these are the flows. Um, so you can see all that. Um, but what I really want to do is just trace it and observe uh, in the trace window what's happening when I when I generate a JWT. So I've invoked it. You can see it's coming back pretty quickly. There's the JWT. Um, and let me see what's happened. So uh, the request came in, uh, and uh, it was a post uh, asking for a token. It ran through all these steps. Finally, it's generating the JWT. Uh, and then um, decoding the JWT, and I just inserted this here just for um, just for diagnostic purposes. When I run decode JWT, I can see all the context variables that are set um, with the with the uh, items from the payload and the header in that JWT. So just for diagnostic purposes, I included that in this demonstration proxy. Okay, so that's one flow. Uh, now the other flow is uh, at the JWKS endpoint. So I should be able to see uh, the JWKS endpoint here. And sure enough, there are the keys. If I want to actually see that in some sort of format, I could do something like that. And there are all the, the keys that I've got in my JWKS. 
Uh, and you can see I've, I've invoked that twice. It's basically just getting that information right out of the, the KVM. Um, okay, so we have a, uh, a token that is here and we have the JWKS. So let me just grab that and I'll store that in a shell variable too. And now what I wanna do is verify or validate um, that uh, receive token. So the next thing uh, I wanna do is, um, is validate that uh, the signature is correct. And I've got another tool for that. Um, so it's right here and we have the JWKS endpoint already. Uh, dash T for the token and it's pulling that in it is retrieving the keys from here um, this is what it got back from the keys so that's directly from Apogee and then it's uh, verifying the signature and it turns out the signature has uh, been verified uh, and there's the payload so that kind of demonstrates what we wanted to accomplish um, let me show you uh, what this looks like in the actual uh, validate token tool. So that's also Node.js and it's really just using that same uh, Node Jose library, um, retrieves the keys from the JWKS endpoint, creates a verifier, verifies that token, and then uh, prints out a happy message if that actually succeeds. And so we saw that it succeeded, uh, no problem. Um, uh, another option we might want to try is verifying that in some other language. So um, I've produced a verifier in uh, C Sharp, and it's um, it's using uh, let's see, let's see if I can show you using using the um, Microsoft Identity Model Tokens um, uh, namespace uh, and a couple of other things. Uh, in order to verify uh, the JWT use signed with RSA. Uh, in this case, we're getting the um, RSA keys from that JWKS URI using token validation parameters. Uh, standard way to do this in um, C Sharp, validating the token and then printing out a happy message if that validation succeeds. So that's my C sharp code, and we should be able to run that with um, with that command. But I am going to need uh, the token, so I'll need this shell variable, and I will also need the JWKS endpoint, which is um, uh, let's just print this out. We're going to want all of that here, and then we'll run that command dot net uh, run, and it's basically just running that assembly that I showed you just a little bit earlier. Uh, and sure enough, you can see uh, for the inbound token, it retrieved the JWKS at the well-known endpoint at Apogee and then verify the signature and reports that the signature is valid. So where's the magic occurring? Uh, we saw the trace and we saw how that's all happening. Uh, the key thing is in the KVM. So as we add or provision keys into Apogee, uh, we will um, set in uh, into the KVM, the JWKS content. This is this content here is what the th the third party verifiers are going to use in order to verify signatures. And this content is not generated by Apogee, but delivered by Apogee upon request. It is generated by those command line tools that I was using, uh, written in Node.js that that either that generate the key pairs and then um, load that information into Apogee in an automated fashion. So the real magic is just that the KVM is a nice kind of stateful store that is available to uh, Apogee API proxies. And I can also rotate keys. So I've got another tool in this, um, uh, in this repository uh, to provision a new key pair. And it's basically doing the same thing, but just setting the current key pair uh, to the updated uh, version. And um, 
That way you can run this run this tool and uh, update the, the key pair that you're using to sign JWT within Apigee. So uh, what do we see? Well, um, I took you through how Apigee can generate JWT and also expose a JWKS endpoint that allows third parties to then verify the signatures on the JWT that Apigee generates. So really nice. You can do this yourself um, and try things out, try the, the key rotation um, and so on. And um, finally, um, you can uh, tear down all that demonstration after you've run it if you want to like remove all the things that it created. Uh, just go into the provision uh, script and uh, attach a dash R. Uh, and then I'll tear everything down, delete the KVM entries, delete the products, uh, the deployments, and all of that um, cleans everything up. So I hope this was helpful. Uh, I hope uh, you've uh, now understood that you can use JWKS within uh, Apigee. If you have any questions on this, hit me up in the YouTube comments or on community. And uh, we'll see you soon.